I, I first want to apologize for being late. I hate speakers who turn up late and uh, miss half it and then proceed to tell everyone their opinions without taking into account the opinions of others. Uh, I think it's disrespectful, etc. Uh, I do have an excuse. Uh, I've just come from St. Patrick's Cathedral where there's a ceremony uh, for the painter Louis de Rocky who died during the week. Time to prepare much, but this is it, we go for it. Um, some time ago, uh, President uh, Michael D. Higgins received an honorary degree at a ceremony in Dublin Castle. And he used the occasion to deliver what I believe was a significant speech. And, and the part that really interested me was when he, he clearly stated that Ireland was experiencing not just an economic crisis, but also an intellectual crisis. Now here, I think, I don't know, but I think he was referring to the absence of any real analysis, discussion, or debate, either in our universities or in the media, as well as the withdrawal of our artists from any real social engagement. Uh, it would seem that the mantra at the moment uh, would, be, would be, there is no alternative. Now, I believe that this imposed consensus sucks any imagination or vision out of the intellectual and cultural life of the nation, which might otherwise provide a way out of the chaos that we find ourselves in today. Those are, uh, uh, are certainly arguments led by Fintan O'Toole about the failure of Irish cultural institutions, and the National Theatre in particular, to produce exciting work that engages imaginatively with the present crisis. And, uh, he did this largely in a TV program, and in the program he reminded us that at other times, in the in uh, in other times of crisis, sorry, in the history of this state, our authors did engage with social reality and did produce work of significance that caused people to question the status quo and perhaps seek a better way. I suppose what he had in mind was for example, Sean O'Casey in the early years of the state and his Dublin trilogy. He also mentioned, uh, another gener generations later, Brian Friel's Philadelphia Here I Come, which looked at the curse of immigra emigration in the 1950s and 60s, sadly now returned to blight the nation once again. He also referenced, the, for instance, the work of Tom Murphy, who challenged the hegemony of the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, now, O'Toole admitted, uh, O'Toole admitted in the course of this program, and here I agree with him, that today there's no shortage of writers and artists in Ireland. And good writers at that, time, at that sometimes. But, and this is an important point, very few of them seem to want to engage with the present crisis. The themes pursued by the majority of artists in this country now are mainly personal ones. I think it's really intriguing that two of the main vehicles for literary expression that have developed in Ireland in recent years have been the monologue in theatre and the memoir in publishing. This little booklet contains several essays written by Ernesto Che Guevara. I know that's a long, long time ago, but Recently, in kind of thinking about where we are at the moment, I vaguely remembered that he had something interesting to say about the role of the artist, particularly the visual artist, in society. So with that in mind, I reread the first essay in the booklet. That essay is called Man and Socialism in Cuba. And I was astonished to discover how relevant his observations still are today. For example, even though he writes in favor of artistic experimentation, saying that, and this is a quote, an ideological and cultural mechanism must be developed which would permit experimentation and clear out the weeds that shoot up so easily in the fer fertilized soil of state subsidization. But on the other hand, he, he warns that sometimes artistic experimentation is invent is invented and taken as the definition of freedom. And this experimentation has limits which are imperceptible until they are clashed with. That is, 
when the real problems of man and his alienated condition are dealt with. I think this is an interesting quote. He says, senseless anguish or vulgar pastimes are comfortable safety valves for human uneasiness. The idea of making art uh, 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 as a weapon of denunciation and accusation is combated. And here's the, the quote that I think is really interesting. He says, if the rules of the game are respected, all honors are obtained. The honors that might be granted to a pirouette-creating monkey. The condition is not attempting to escape from the invisible cage. Well, certainly in Ireland today, just when we desperately need our artists and intellectuals to make some sense of the ongoing crisis, we find ourselves faced with a veritable zoo of, pirouette, of pirouetting monkeys, all trapped in this invisible cage. A real zone of underdevelopment. I mean, I could quote figure after figure to you in that regard. One EU, one EU survey, I think about three years ago or so, uh, examined state support in the 27 countries in Europe. And uh, guess where Ireland came? In the, is it 27 or 28 countries we have? 27, isn't it? 28 difficult. Huh? It came 20th, didn't 27. It? Oh. It's 27th at the moment, sorry. Where did Ireland come in in terms of uh, state support for the arts within the 27 countries in the EU? Uh, 28th. <laughs> <laughs> Close. 20, 27th. So that's the reality, you know? That's why I use the term under, uh, uh, underdevelopment, underresourced. And that creates what I believe is, uh, is a very unhealthy situation. What this means for artists, for instance, they're forced to compete for a share of the meagre resources that do exist. Uh, like in other, you know, more developed societies, uh, like in the United States, for example, where there isn't great state support for the arts, but there's huge private investment, private patronage. So in Ireland, we're caught, you know, with relatively little private sponsorship and meagre state support. So this leaves the ar artists in a really serious kind of situation. There is an irony here, uh, and not that I'm advocating cutbacks in the arts or anything like that, but there is an irony, irony that uh, possibly one consequence of the pre present crisis will be that uh, in the near future, even those artists who might be tempted or prepared to sell out will find that no one is buying. <laughs> So perhaps one byproduct, one positive byproduct of the recession within the artistic community might be a kind of reinvigoration because we'll have an artistic community literally with nothing to lose and they might be prepared to challenge the status quo and help point the way for a just and fairer future for us all. Thank you.